Greetings, and welcome to episode 24, the Black Friday edition. I'm not so much calling it that because I'll be pointing out the inherent flaws in human society, but because I'm filming on Black Friday. Today's episode will actually be about the transformative power of travel. So if you're ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the transformative power of travel. And I'll be speaking from my own experience. I'm not drawing on an author or anybody else. And if you have your own transformative experience, I would like to hear about it in the comments or leave a video response because this these are the things that interest me simply because I grew up in a military household. I was an Air Force brat, so I moved around a lot. I lived in, what is it, eight states and three different countries. I've lived in the United States, England, and Germany. Matter of fact, I spend, I'm 40, I spend about a quarter of my life overseas. About nine, nine and a half years. So, yeah, that's, it's, so I can say, and on top of that, bear in mind, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professional driver, that is to say a truck driver, so I've been all over the country, it's not just, oh, I lived in eight states, but I've, I've traveled the entire country extensively, and I can tell you that it opens up a part of you that will never open if you experience your life in one area your entire life. Uh, seeing other cultures, experiencing culture shock for the first time, experiencing reverse culture shock when you come back to where you came from. Uh, it's, it's, it's indescribable. I can't describe what these things do for you uh, but I'll do my best to describe how it happened to me. Like, traveling at a young age, you don't experience culture shock so much. Like, changes are, to a child, changes are inevitable. So you're, a child will just roll with the punches. Oh, new place. Oh, new people. Oh, new place. I mean, because that happens constantly. Even if a person never leaves uh, the town and surrounding area that they that they were born in, it's your scenery is constantly changing people are constantly changing so to a child even moving overseas is not a big deal <clears throat> excuse me but let's say I was born in Montana in the United States we went from there to New York from New York we went to England from England we went all the way back to California and then from California we went to Germany by the time we got back from Germany, I was 10 years old. Now, mind you, the amount of time I spent from birth till 10 years old, the amount of time I spent in the United States was, let's see, a year in California, maybe six months in New York, and I I can only attribute the rest of the time to uh, what do you call it? Montana, where I was born. I couldn't even think of the place where I was born. Uh, but I'm 10 when I'm coming back, and I lived in, over, or I lived overseas for, so I probably didn't even spend an entire year in California simply because I'm ten and a half when I get back to the States. But I only spent about nine years, nine and a half years overseas. So that leaves a year between the time I was born and the time I came back. 
that leaves a year that I spent in the States. So when we got back here when I was 10, I we mo were moving from Germany back to the States, and I experienced reverse culture shock, which was... And I know this is something I noticed at a very young age because I noticed my abilities at a very young age. When we got back to the States, everyone was thinking in English. And I was like, whoa, I can understand them. And everyone was talking in English. And it was like, whoa, I can understand them. It was alien to me because I was used to everything being German. The vibration of the trees, the vibration of the grass, you walk past an animal. It's thinking like a horse or a cow or a dog or a cat, but it's thinking and it's in German. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. It's the understanding that speech, the words, is just a mechanic and the actual language comes from feelings and mental association. The mechanical part of language just serves as an easy way to trigger the mental picture and the emotional response associated with it. So when I say everything was speaking in German, the feeling was in German. It's a completely different frequency than from being here. And to experience that, you'd have to go there. <laughs> and then come back. I mean, spend some time there. Spend six months there. A year. And then come back. You'll notice a distinct difference. It's not just the words you're hearing. It's the, vi it's the overall vibe feels different than over here. So... That's reverse, reverse, or excuse me, that is reverse culture shock. Like, as I said, I was traveling at such a young age that I'd never experienced culture shock. It wasn't like, oh, it's so different. To me, you're a kid. Everything's just been changing since you were born. It doesn't really matter. So, thinking back to the beginning of this conversation, I really didn't spend that much time in the state I was born in. It could have only been a couple of months. And it could have only been a couple of months in New York. And it could have only been a few. It had to fit in the span of maybe a year and a half. So, in the states. And then... Moving to... Moving overseas. Because three years... In England and six years in Germany that's nine years and I came back I was ten years old so that leaves yeah that leaves a year <laughs> that leaves a year that I spent in the United States the country I was actually born in and the rest was overseas so reverse culture shock But it opened up in me things that would never have been opened up otherwise. When in my travels as a truck driver, as in my travels just moving from state to state, because the eight states I've lived in, uh, five or six of those were before I moved out of the house and was out on my own moving around. So you go from place to place and you most of the people you meet have never been out of their small town and surrounding area kind of thing or even city surrounding area kind of thing and they just don't get that you've seen a little bit more they don't get that matter of fact they don't see that experience in you unless you actually convey it to them like hey I used to live over here they don't see that because it's alien to them because they've never been through it just like a person that's never been in a car wreck is not going to understand that you've been in a car accident unless you say hey I've been in a car accident because that concept is alien to them other than the fact that they know about it just like you know about travel you just never done it and that's not saying you've never done it I'm just saying for instance so And it's not just that, oh, going to one place, go, go, no matter where you go, it only opens up one spot. No, every different place you travel to. And you could even just spend a few hours in that place. 
I strongly recommend if you go to a new place, drink a glass of water because it comes up out of the earth in that area and you get a better feel for that area. Not soda, glass of water, or even chew on some ice. But it, every place you go opens up a new spot. It's, it, it becomes easier to have an open mind because your mind has been opened for you. Because you had to open your mind to this new culture. You had to open your mind to this different way of life, this different way of thinking, speaking, dressing, the different way people interact. And yeah, basic human interaction, sure, but people have different, I want to say etiquette, but that that word doesn't describe what I'm talking about. It's 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 just different. And to experience it, like I said, you'd have to go there. But once that, once your mind is open, it is more capable of being open to new ideas, new cultures, uh, learning somebody else's history. Uh, people, I, I can say that that's a huge reason why I'm not a racist. Because having experienced so many different cultures, I'm not afraid of somebody else's culture. And that's what most people, their, their, closet sense of racism that they, they when I say closet sense that means they don't even realize they're being racist they don't realize that they're uh, ooh, I don't want to go anywhere near that it's not the person so much as their back culture yeah they're here in the states or yeah now you're over there but you cannot be terrified by different cultures you have to take it in because some of these cultures if you get past the surface of your fear or or whatever it is that's holding you back some of these cultures are very very beautiful like when I lived in Germany we used to go on these massive field trips and field trips over here they're cool you go to the museum and yeah I went to the museum over there we went and saw plays when we lived over there but I think the most profound thing that ever happened to me while traveling was we one of the field trips I went on we went to visit an old castle and just uh, whew, the energy there was just like wow this is amazing this is amazing you can almost get a feel for what it felt like then and yeah it was it was amazing uh, and don't get me wrong some really horrible things happened to me when I was over there not in Germany but when we lived in England so, I'm not going to say that only good things will happen while you're out, out and abroad. No, life is still going to be life. But there is an added bonus that goes with the getting to see new places that you open up new places in here. And it allows for you to know it's okay to have an open mind. Now, becoming discerning on what you let in and what you don't let in, that is up to the person on the journey. That is up to the person traveling to be able to discern these things. I would not expect anyone to uh, to just, oh, I, I, I went out and got an open mind, now I have to accept everything. No, even I don't accept everything. If I can't trace it to some form of proof, then it's discounted. But the fact that I had an open mind enough to give it a chance to research it in the first place speaks volumes. Most people turn something down out of hand just because. But then a lot of these people that do that never left their small town and surrounding area kind of living or mentality. And I think that has a lot to do with it. If you, I mean, you don't even have to travel overseas. Travel within the country that you live in. And I don't care if you live in J Europe and you're watching this, or if you live in the United States and you're watching this. Get out of your small town and surrounding area. Travel. See the place that you live. See, Go see the country that you live in. Your state, your town is just one small part of a big state. That state is one small part of a huge country. And your country... Is part of a continent. Think about that for a minute.
North America is pretty huge and you can't presume to have all the, the facts or have all any information of the subtle nuance of life from that place because that place is only going to show you the subtle nuance of that place it's only going to show you the culture and cultural differences of that one location oh yeah you can read about it and you can see it on TV but it's not the same thing at all going there going to see it anyone that's read a brochure or saw a commercial about going on vacation to a particular place can tell you that it was different than the brochure when they got there. It was different than the commercial when they got there. And sometimes you're pleased and oh, sometimes it's underwhelming. Sometimes they oversell the destination and it's not what you thought it was going to be. My advice to that is go without expectation. Go for the sake of going. Go for the sake of seeing something different than what you're used to. It's, it's that simple. It begins to transform you. Like I said, you, 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 you have an open mind. You're more open to other cultures. You're less likely to fall for news stories that say, well, these people are like that. These people are like that. If you've been there, you know it's bullshit. <laughs> you know that, well, these people don't act like that. There's people that will tell you they've been to Japan, they've been to China, they've been to Russia, and they'll tell you life just doesn't happen the way they portray it to us on the TV. Yes, it's not like the way we live. That's because they have a different culture. And we can't, and the reason, and they say, well, you're an American. No, I am American. And the fact that I know for a fact that we shouldn't go around imposing our culture and our views on other people is because I've, I've been over there. I've been there. They live different because they're not us. And the, knowing that, reading about it, seeing that on TV is different than going over there and feeling it yourself and knowing that I've been lied to all these years. And people don't understand how, well, how can you see it that way? Because I know better than to be spoon-fed ideas about a place that I've already been and know that they're bullshitting. And so if they're bullshitting about this, what else are they bullshitting about? Is every time they open their mouths about another country or culture going to be a lie? That's how I'm viewing it. Is it going to be a lie? Can I back up their fact? Or am I going to take the little bit of video they show that, Anybody could put on a hood, cover their face, and pretend to be somebody. Welcome to the digital age. <laughs> uh, but even in a spiritual sense, knowing that I could tell the difference between that European energy and the United States of America energy, this country's energy, knowing I could tell the difference, that opens up a lot. That opens up a type of empathy that you can feel the difference. And if you can feel the difference, you can feel anything. So someone that's, say, a little bit more rigid, but they'd maybe like to get a little more open. And like I said, you don't have to travel overseas to get this because every town is different. Not just the states, but every town. You could stay in your state and just travel to each town. Make it, make it your bucket list to hit at least every major town or city in the state you live in. And you'll still see and feel a difference in the in the, the local culture the the social interaction the subtle nuance you'll see a difference i know from my travels as a truck driver that even in this country everyone says you got to speak english to live here which version each town has their different version of the same dialect each town not just each state but each town approaches the language differently. They have their own slang. They have their own uh, 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 inflection. 
each town. So, you got to speak English. Which version? I People hear me talk. And they say, wow, you don't sound like a black person. I've talked to people on the phone and show up in person and they're like, because they weren't expecting a black person. Well, I can speak eloquently. Well, you talk like a white person is what some people say. No, I've traveled and this is the sum total of every accent I've ever come in contact with. I don't talk like anybody I've ever met unless that person was a military brat for some branch of the armed forces because they too are they've got that accent of every accent they've ever encountered when I first learned to talk I lived in England we grew up I grew up until we moved back to uh, California for that short time we grew up and had that well what an American would call that accent, that the, the the British accent, but my father, I was. This is what I was told. My father was embarrassed of that, so he kind of forced us to get rid of the accent. But it, it's still a part of my inflection. I mean, I don't talk with the accent, but it was the foundation for every other accent I've ever accumulated. Because if you noticed, if you hang out with or you're interactions involve people that have an accent after a while you pick up that accent I don't care how old you are and you may not speak in that accent fully but some of the words you say will have that accent I've seen it <laughs> there's a friend of mine that's a writer and her husband is British and he has a thick British accent but every so often he'll speak a whole sentence and it sounds like he has no accent at all You see what it, so it's just the the power of travel. <laughs> it 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 caused my inflection, it caused my the, the way I speak to sound what some would consider white. I like to say eloquent because I speak and I pronounce my words and I and I pronounce them properly. I enunciate. And I'm not going to say, well, it's good breeding or oh, I had an excellent schooling. No, I travel. Travel. <laughs> Nothing more. I uh, I wish I could describe it because I want to talk about s spiritual aspects and when I realized I had abilities I lived in Germany I didn't live here in the States so maybe that's also an aspect maybe that's also one of the things that opened up for me because I wasn't here where everyone doubts everything I was over there where people are more open-minded towards these things even the religious people are more open-minded towards these things. It's over here where it's more vilified. But, yeah, that's that's where I first, that my abilities first opened up. I think I was four and a half. This is just before my fifth birthday. I realized that I could hear everything. Not just sound, but solid objects. And that I could hear it with my entire body. And it just kind of expanded from there. And over the years, so as not to go crazy, I developed, excuse me, I developed certain filters to, to be able to rein it in. So like I said, I didn't go crazy. But yeah, I was overseas when it opened. I lived in Germany. I want to say I lived in a little town called Mailbach. I think. I'm pretty sure that's where we lived. But anyway, that where I the, the exact house I lived in is unimportant. I'm just the region of the planet that I lived in. 
was not the region of the planet I was born in. And since then, since I was born, the longest I've ever lived in any one place, I lived in Michigan for, I want to say, 16 years, 14 years. That's the longest I've ever lived in any place. I'm not from Michigan. I didn't have any family in Michigan. Matter of fact, the one relative, one blood relative I have in Michigan moved there two years before I moved back here to Arizona. <laughs> two or three years before I moved back here to Arizona. And I've only been back here in Arizona for about a year. So between 14 and 16 years, I've lived there. And then I moved here. And then they've been there for, they were there for three years before I moved back here. So they weren't there for that long. It's a shame we never got to hook up, though, because they lived in a different part. And if you've ever been to Michigan, it's a drive to get from upper Michigan to lower Michigan. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, yeah, it's, it's really hard to describe a feeling. But it, that feeling... If you let it be, because you, I mind you, you're going to hear me and you're going to go out and you're going to want to travel and you're going to want to experience it like I experienced it. But remember, I started traveling when I was young, so I know not to just go to an area and be rigid and not let anything in. It's just natural for me to accept whatever I'm walking into as the natural way of things. That new feeling coming in, that's this area's vibe, that's the frequency going on here. I've been doing it literally since I was a baby. If you run out thinking you're going to experience it like I am, you're not going to. Because if you're going to travel as a teen, anywhere from teenager to adult, and at and and any level of adult, it's going to be different for you. For you, because either a you've already been out traveling and you know what I'm talking about, so this needs no explanation, or you've never traveled and it's going to strike you differently and you're going to get culture shock even just going to the different towns you're going to say wow i didn't never realized things were so different even within my own state but if you can get to a point where you can let that energy in it's gonna open doors in here and i guarantee you if once you get out and you start going to the more major towns and cities in your own state, you're going to want to see more of the country. There's been no point in my life where I didn't want to just continue traveling. There's also been no point in my life where I could afford to continue traveling. <laughs> when I travel now, it's because there are more opportunities financially where I'm going than where I'm leaving. That's just a fact. I, I have to say one time I did in fact move because I just got out of a horrible relationship and this girl was like, hey, move with me to Michigan. That's how I got to Michigan. And I said, okay. And that didn't work out so well. But it got me out of the place I was in because the place I was in, not just meaning the state I lived in, but the place I was in was I was starting to develop that can't leave the small town and surrounding areas kind of mentality and it wasn't the place so much as the connections I had made and all my friends and after I left I realized that wow these people don't even miss me life goes on and I missed them but life went on and after a while of not being missed I started not missing them they don't want to return letters or phone calls but most of the people I knew and grew up with well I can't say most of them I'd say about no it was greater than a third I'd say two-thirds of the people I grew up with were military brats because you grew up on a military installation regardless of if you go off base for school they're still military brats and they've traveled most of them don't make any mistake about this just because you're a military brat doesn't mean you've traveled outside the country or even within the country. Some people get stationed at a location for their entire term of service 
and never leave, so they are still stuck in the small town surrounding area mentality. But bear this in mind. Some of, I'd say, 30% of the people I grew up with that were military brats have never left the last place I lived with my family, which would be Nebraska, when my uh, mother was stationed at Offutt Air Force Base before they decommissioned it as SAC headquarters and made it a naval installation for some reason. That's the point. <laughs> point being, they still, they now, after having traveled, they now have that, oh, I can never leave here. And I can't fathom that. I can't even fathom living here the rest of my life. There's other places I want. I want to actually go back to Montana and live there for a short while. Just because I, I have a feeling that there's something I missed, something I didn't get having been born and then whisked away from there. But yeah, I, I cannot begin to point you in a direction of scientific studies that prove what I'm saying. All I can say is that you need to go out, if you never have traveled, you need to go out and experience it for yourself. This is how it happened to me when I traveled, but I started traveling almost from birth till what I lived here a year, so up until a year ago. <laughs> and then on top of that, being an over the road truck driver and seeing at least 46 of the connected 48 states. I think there's only two states I didn't drive in. But that doesn't mean I didn't go there or pass through there. That just means I just didn't get freight there. I've had freight in almost every state in the Union. Of the connected 48 states, I've never been to, to Alaska or Hawaii. And because they're not connected as a truck driver, I would never be able to get there anyway. But as a human being... I could very well charter a flight, go to Can or go to Alaska, or go to Hawaii. I've never been to Canada, and I've never been to Mexico. And living in Michigan, I lived right there on the border. Well, the state I was in, lived in was right there on the border, and I've been up to the border, but I've never been into Canada. I've been, I live in Arizona now, right by the border. Well, not right by the border. I live in Phoenix, but I'm by the border of Mexico. And I've lived in Arizona before, still never been to Mexico. <laughs> but Mexico and Canada are places I would like to see. And not so much for the spiritual ramifications or the mind opening, but just so I can say I've seen it. And I, going to Mexico would, would kind of, I guess that would qualify for mind opening spiritual experience because of the, the pyramids and whatnot and the ruins. But other than that, no, it's just so I can actually say I've, I've gone there. But, uh, I'm almost not American other than the fact that I was born in Montana because whisked away for 10 years. I mean, if, if I, if anyone else moved here after being 10 years old already, they wouldn't be technically American just because they lived here for 30 years. <laughs> but yes, I was born here in the United States in Mon Great Falls, Montana. And, uh, for that indescribable spiritual, mental, and emotional transformation that I uh, lack the words to describe properly, go out and travel. And like I said, you don't have to, do, oh, i got to save money and get to Germany. No. Start in your own state. Just go every once a month. Go see a different town or major city in the state you live in. If you still have that Oh, because you it can become addictive. Traveling can become addictive. If you still have that bug after that, then once a year, go to a different state. Vacation. Go to a different state and visit. You might find the place you're supposed to live. There's several states. When I lived in Michigan, there were several states I found that it felt like I was supposed to be living there. Other than living in Michigan. 
anyway <laughs> it's getting on past the uh, 30 minute mark so we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up if you enjoyed this video <laughs> as much as I enjoy talking about it if you enjoyed this video please click the like button you can favorite the video if you want but if you would like to keep coming back and getting some insights and information or you just like the sound of my voice hit the subscribe button but until next time you hang in there <laughs>